Hi everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. My name is Abdi for ASR 3D and Motion Graphics. And today I would like to show you how we can create an animated curtain opening in 3ds Max using TieFlow. This is what we're going to create, although not the entire room. There is something that I already prepared, but the animation and the setup for the TieFlow. So let me just jump into 3ds Max and show you what we get so far. Here we have just two planes that I'm going to use as my curtain meshes. And on the top here we have also a so-called railing where I placed these two planes actually in each gap of it. So these two are actually offset in their X position. You don't have to do that, but it is what I did. And the next thing we have, if I get rid of these guys, we have these two helpers up here. And these two are animated, so they are going in opposite directions. And they are animated for three seconds, yeah, they move over three seconds. And we're going to use them to pull our curtain apart, so just away. And now let me bring them back in and start the setup with our tie flow. So I'm going to add a tie flow object into my scene here. I'm going to center this, you don't have to. Then we go to time steps right away and set it to 1 8. Now we can open the editor and then zoom that back a little bit. Bring in birth objects and go and pick the number 1 and curtain number 2. Right away we will add cloth bind into that. Turn off display geometry, we don't need it now. And then we're going to go and use a surface test operator and select our railing on the top here and set the distance to less than 0.5 centimeters. I'm going to change that color to some reddish or something. And now we can go and set the geometry size, the display size to two and you're gonna see what happens so now you see these red dots on top which means that everything which is closer than 0.5 centimeters to this surface to our railing will get sent to next event which is that red dots what we see on the top here and as soon we have them in here we want to go and bind those to the railing itself. So bind object and then pick the railing. In our first event here, we need some force in order to have some gravity. Uh, we're going to set the gravity strength to minus point or point minus 0 0.5. And this is actually our basic setup. So Let's go and select the cloth point again, move it down, and I'm going to change the stiffness solver to constraint, which gives me much more accurate results. And I would also like to go down here and enable add shelf to surface. And for the inner amount, I'm going to let it be on 0.1, and the outer amount, I'm going to change it to zero because I just want it to have on the other side of the curtain not on both sides so and after all that we can go and use object test and we go and select our first and the second helper and we're gonna set the distance here to about three so when when these guys are closer to our helpers which are these guys they go and turn green which is now the third event and we can go and now bind those to the helpers themselves so 
gonna pick those again and lock the particles to them so when they move the whole thing will move with it now let's go and have a quick look of what we have so far so let me bring that back in and simulate so there we go now we have that simulation but if you take a closer look you will see that we have some issues here so that part is stay is still locked to this surface and this is this can have two reasons and it is because that particles are still too close or they are getting again too close to this surface and they start to stick on it in order to avoid this we can go uh, back to our surface test change the timing to frame and set the frame range from 0 to 1 so that will help to avoid that thing from happening so let me go and run the simulation again And now, as you can see, that thing is solved. So, the next thing I would like to do is bring in some self-collision. We could use CUDA if you have the Pro version, but that would take about 10 times longer to simulate that thing because we have so many meshes. We have about 10,000 polygons per uh, curtain here. So which gives us some good results but if you go and turn on CUDA that will just slow down everything will give you the much accurate results possible but the most accurate results but um, it will take just a good amount of time so something like this could easily take up to 30 minutes until it is finished if you're using CUDA but that is just given in the pro version and we're going to use something else which is called particle physics that kind of does the same thing not as accurate as CUDA is but it still helps with some cheating on the self collision stuff on the cloud mesh so we can just drag it into the first event after the cloud bind and then go here change the collide radius from shape radius to absolute and set the radius to something like 0.13 or actually 0.125 I don't need tolerances here and I'm gonna set the stiffness to 1 and change the stiffness solver again to constraint so that should give us some self collision let's go and test that and it is also not slowing down the animation too much so it's really acceptable it looks much better right now than what we had before now these things are swinging a lot right now it is slower than the real-time speed but they're just going too wild and they will take much longer to settle down then we want him to so in order to slow down that part we can go and use a slow operator so go down here slow operator drag it just underneath of the force operator 
set that maybe to something like six and for the timing i don't want to slow down everything just right from the beginning but when these helpers are coming to a stop so when the dragging or pulling is actually done so it is at frame 100 so we go back to timing change it again to frame and set the starting frame to a hundred so in that way it will start slow down the stuff from frame 200 upwards and let's see what we have There we go. It opens nicely and it collides actually really good. Self collision works as well. And they slow down and come to an end really, really quick. So, And this is actually it. This is how you can animate or simulate the clouds um, as an opening curtain. And I hope that this tutorial is useful to you. And I'm wishing you a great and successful day. Bye-bye.